Welcome to Tales of Varda, where we discuss and explore Middle Earth. Today we start a new series all about ranking powerful cities and regions of Middle Earth. In this video we rank the top 5 realms of the first age. We will be excluding any evil kingdoms as that will have its own video. And let's begin. Coming in at 5th is Nargothrond. We have a separate video all about Nargothrond, but now we will discuss its power. Nargothrond was built by Finrod Felicum, a great elf of the House of Finarfin. Its creation was assisted directly by the Valar, Omo. The city had many advantages, as it was carved out of the rock and had a hill raised in front of the gate. Nargothrond was well guarded until the death of Finn. This is the point when Orodreth, the nephew of Finrod, caused the sacking of Nargothrond. The people of the city forsook secrecy and ignored the warnings of Ulmo. Nargothrond was great, but due to the massive force of Morgoth and the trickery of Glaron, the father of dragons, Nargothrond fell. Nargothrond was a secretive place and remained it for a vast time, but when time came, the city stood to the end. Next is Himring, the fortress of Mythos, the eldest son of Fëanor. There is little info about the fortress. It was built by Mythros after the sons of Fëanor settled in East Beleriand. This fortress guarded the north-eastern border and the hills south would be known at the, as the Marches of Mithros. The fortress stood firm through the Dagobragola and many survivors from the surrounding regions, including Mithros's brother Megal, rallied there. In the battle, the orcs take the pass of Aglond, but Mithros was able to take it using the forces from Himring. The fortress stood for a while longer, until the near knife unloaded. It's possible that it was forsaken as the sons of Fen would no longer have the strength to maintain it. But this fortress stood during the slaughter of the Dagobargola, whilst others fell. This is surely a show of its formidability. Third, we have Hiflam, the land of Fingolfin, and later Fingon. This land was almost impenetrable, as it was protected by all sides with mountain ranges. The Ered Rethrin from the southeast, and the Ered Lomin from the northwest. These mountains had few passes. King Fingolfin built Barad Ethil in the east of Hiflam to serve as a fortress and capital. All throughout the early first stage, Morgoth desperately wanted to crush Hiflum, but Fingolfin's defences were mighty. During the siege on Angband, Fingolfin gave Hador the fiefdom of Dor Lomin. This gave Hiflum an ally to the south. During the Dago Bragola, Hiflum once again proved mighty, though High King Fingolfin was killed in the duel with the Dark Lord. Seven years after the Dagobragola, Morgoth sent a great force against Hiflum, attacking the passes of Ered Rethrin. Galdor died defending the Ethel Syrian. Hiflum eventually was lost after the near knife Arnoidiad. The Hadorians were scattered, killed or enslaved. The Nordor, who could not flee in time, were enslaved in Morgoth's mines. Hiflum might have stood a while longer had High King Fingon not been killed and Turgon forced to retreat into the mountains. The mountains of Hiflum were pretty much impenetrable, but the distance in which Hiflum lay to Angband is a great factor in its downfall. At second we have Doriath, the Hidden Kingdom. This was a woodland realm ruled by King Fingon and Queen Melian. The great strength of the forest was the girdle of Melian, an enchantment set around Doriath to protect its borders and let no evil in. 
This power was achieved by Melian, for she was a Maya. During much of the wars of Valerian, Doriath sent no reinforcements, as Fingal was hostile to the sons of Fernal. But at last, greed proved the destruction of Doriath. Receiving one of the Silmarils from Beren, and the Nauglamir from Hurin, Thingol thought of merging these gems and tasked the dwarves of Nogrod to do so. After the necklace was completed, the dwarves demanded it for themselves, for it had been of dwarvish make. Thingol denied, and the angered dwarves slew Thingol. After the death of Thingol, Melian departed west, and the girdle of Melian was broken. Soon after, the sons of Fernal attacked Doria, and here the realm finally ended. The strength of the girdle of Melian is legendary, as even Ungoliant, a demon that challenged Morgoth, could not pass through. Before we go on to number one, Let's look at some honourable mentions. Nogrod and Belagost were two dwarven cities in the Blue Mountains. They are most renowned for their smiths and creations, as the armour of the dwarves was able to withstand dragon fire. A particular smith of Nogrod, Telkar, also created Angrist, the knife which Beren used to cut a Silmaril out of Morgoth's crown and he also created Narsil, which would pass to Elendil at the cover, legendary sword of the third age. And in first place is Gondolin, the hidden city. This city was built by Turgon and was akin to Nargothon. It was also aided by Ormond. The city was completely surrounded by the encircling mountains, with only one way in. The path into Gondolin was guarded by seven gates, made of wood, stone, bronze, iron, silver, gold, and steel. Gondolin's location was kept secret by the aid of the great eagles of Manuel, who had their eyries in the encircling mountains. But when time came, Gondolin fell as many cities before it had. However, due to a secret path created by Idril, Turgon's daughter, many elves survived. Gondolin stood for longest of all Nordoran realms, but his legacy was great, as even the goblins of the Third Age remembered the power of the elves of Gondolin. Thank you for watching today's video. Do you agree with our choices? Please let us know in the comments below. And as always, please like and subscribe.